All right, folks, in this video, we're going to take a quick look at this bandpass filter that I built. I built it for the 20 meter band and specifically for use on FT8. In this video, we're going to show the different parts and components, the instructions that I used. We're going to test it out with a Nano VNA, so stay tuned. PCBWay.com is known throughout the industry for its strong commitment to quality. That's why I recommend PCBWay.com to anybody who has prototyping or manufacturing needs. PCBWay.com can support your project's needs for electronic manufacturing services. It's a one-stop solution that offers printed circuit board assembly, system assembly, and failure analysis. If you're looking for a partner that can help get your product to market, look no further than PCBWay.com. Okay, so here's our actual bandpass filter, and uh, you can see it right here. I mounted it on this PCB Proto board. Uh, I'm debating getting some actual boards made from PCB Way. Uh, I just need to figure out how to do that. But uh, we have the three toroidal inductors, and I've got a video I'll link below about how I wrap these and tune those. And then I've got three of these silver mica capacitors of uh, various values. And I'll show the instructions that I use to tell you the values for all this stuff. Um, it was pretty easy to build. And then we just have these SMA connectors. Now what I needed to do is I needed to build my own ground plane on the back, um, which was easy enough. I just used some legs from the components that I cut off and then just one additional piece of wire right here. But it was pretty, pretty simple to build. In the instructions, it will tell you that you can use either these T80-6 powdered iron cores. Um, these are T94s. Uh, I would like to use these. They're a little bit bigger. They give me a little bit better power handling. I should be able to handle 100 watts with these, no, no problem. But uh, also, they say that you can use these T86-6. So when you look at a measurement of, of a core, now this is bigger than a T80 um, core, but the first number, the 80, is the designation in diameter and in inches across the core. And then after the dash, this is the mix. So this would be a mix six powdered iron core. And that is how you, uh, how you read that. And then for the capacitors, it's best to use these silver mica capacitors. So I use these 500 picofarad, 500 volts. And then I used one of these, uh, 50 picofarad, uh, five, it says 500 kilovolts. And, uh, Anyhow, they ain't cheap, I can tell you that. So I, I linked the video uh, for the build that I did about a year ago. This was the first one that I made, and this thing's a mess. I'm kind of embarrassed to show it, and uh, I can't believe that uh, I actually, <laughs> actually built this and showed it off to people. But this one didn't quite turn out the way that we wanted. It wasn't at the right frequency, and it did not have very steep uh, skirts or cutoffs. And a lot of people gave me some really good advice about it. The one they said that the component legs were too long and that perhaps these grounding wires were too long. So what I think I'll do in a future video is either use this one or build a new one on this copper clad board. Uh, I'll rip all this out and rebuild it and then fit it into this case. And then that way I've got some ruggedness and some durability to the project. All right, let's get this thing connected. We're going to use a Nano VNA. This is the H4. It's one of my favorites. And we'll take a look and see how it performs in Nano VNA Saver. And uh, we'll take a look at the article as well. Okay, so here is the display in Nano VNA Saver. We have our Nano VNA connected via the USB port to our computer. And we ran a sweep from 6.5 megahertz all the way up to 30 megahertz. And uh, we have 20 segments in our sweep, which gives us a step every 11.64 kilohertz, which is pretty good. Anyhow, when we take a look at this, uh, keep in mind that the bandpass filter was designed to work on 20 meters. And then um, I tuned it a little bit because I wanted it to be most effective for digital modes, FT8 specifically. So on the sweep, you can see a black marker. That is our center marker, marker number two. And that is set for 14.076989, which is as close as I could get it to 14.074, which is the FT8 frequency. When we take a look at that marker, what we do see is uh, it is negative 0.345. So about three and a half, point three and a half a dB of insertion loss through the filter, which isn't bad. Um, we have a pretty tight filter here when we take a look at it. And I marked the three dB roll offs or negative three dB roll offs. Marker number one is the one on the lower end and that is at 13.2. 
4215, which is pretty good. And then marker number three, the blue marker is at 14.752. Uh, and what that does is it gives us a pretty narrow filter, which is exactly what we were looking for. Now on the lower end, the skirt is not as steep. And I mentioned earlier, this is a third order Butterworth filter, and um, we could make it a fifth order and maybe uh, increase the sharpness of those slopes a little bit. But I think that this would work pretty well. When we take a look at where we would be in the 40 meter band, for example, we're probably somewhere around 13, 14, uh, negative 14 dB. And then uh, you can see on the chart that when we look at some of the other bands, like uh, we're at negative 25 for the 10 meter band. So I think this would work reasonably well and uh, it should handle up to 100 watts. Now, what's interesting about these uh, bandpass filters is that if you put them in between your radio and your amplifier, you can use lower power going into these. And then in your final amplification stage in your amplifier, that's where you would get, you know, 200, 500, 700, 1,000 uh, watts of output. And the, the device itself doesn't need to be able to handle that because it's only handling the signal between the radio and the amplifier. So I would say that this turned out pretty good and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I think the next step for me would be get it into a ruggedized box so that I can take it uh, outside and bang it around and all those things and not incur any damage. I'll link this article below, but this is the documentation that I use to build the bandpass filter. And it's from an early version of um, QST magazine uh, published by the ARRL. So uh, great folks over there, join the league. And what I wanted to say is thanks to Lou Gordon, K4BX, uh, and he is the gentleman who put this article together. Here you can see it in a box, and this is like the earlier build that I did that didn't quite work as well as I anticipated. Anyhow, when you go through here, this is the schematic of the three-pole or third-order, three-order Butterworth bandpass filter. And then you can see that initially we have C1 and L1, that's capacitor 1 and inductor 1, and they are in parallel to our circuit. Then in series, we have inductor 2, capacitor 2, and then back in parallel, we have capacitor 3 and inductor 3. And then it goes out to our, um, to our antenna and to the ground. If I scroll down a little bit, you'll see some bandpass filter specifications, and this tells you the bands that you want to use for your bandpass filter, and then it gives the values for the capacitors and the inductors, and then it gives you options for two different cores, T68-6 and T80-6. We use the T80-6 because I wanted to be able to put more power through here uh, if necessary. And then it also will tell you the number of turns. And I did a video, and I'll link it below, on actually tuning the inductors. And I did that separately because it's a little bit of a tedious process. But basically, I just wrapped the cores, hooked it up to an inductance meter, and then made adjustments as necessary. Over here on the right-hand side, it talks a little bit about the different types of cores um, that you would use for your inductors and why you would choose one of those. The last thing I wanted to share, if I scroll down, is here is a physical layout of what you're looking for. And then maybe we'll build this one uh, in the future, but this is a schematic of a five pole Butterworth bandpass filter. And um, now this has C5 and L5. I believe these are all the same value anyway. Well, the ones on the ends are the same, same values. Uh, when I look at the table up here, it did not have the specifications for those particular ones. But uh, I'm sure if I read through here, I'd be able to figure it out. Anyhow, I just wanted to show this, and uh, it will be linked below. It's uh, from September 1998. It'll be linked below, and you can check it out. All right, folks, and I think that's going to wrap up the video. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thanks for watching. It's greatly appreciated.